Howdy, Stan Fleming Science, looking at the properties of materials. So to start with, I've got two pictures here. I've got a aeroplane, this is a 787 Dreamliner being built. Um, it's interesting in that it's a passenger plane that's built out of plastic. Um, plastic is the main material used for its outside, its external. The question is, why would you use plastic to build an aeroplane, whereas traditionally they've been built of aluminium? Down here we have a motorbike that's built out of wood. And the question is, why are most motorbikes built out of metal rather than wood? So why are the materials being used in different ways in these two um, objects. So the science understanding that we're going to look at is the uses of materials are related to their properties including solubility, thermal electrical conductivity, melting point and boiling point. We're going to look at a few other properties uh, in addition to this list just so we can get an idea of the properties of materials that we're going to be talking about. So the reason why we're looking at materials and their properties is because a lot of chemistry is based around trying to design a material that meets particular properties. So um, why do we use particular materials and how do we use their properties to make particular things. Down here we have a piece of metal and over here we have a whole heap of different plastics. Um, objects that used to be made out of metal are now made out of plastics and the question is why? Why have we switched over in terms of those materials? So we're going to discuss that and you need to think about that. So let's just discuss a couple of properties. Um, over here we have a piece of iron which is easily oxidised which is a chemical property. Here we have a whole heap of gold which isn't easily oxidised. So this explanation of rusting and oxidation explains why we use gold for different uh, purposes than we use iron. Um, we've got salt and sand. So here's me on a beach with some sand behind me. Here's some salt dissolving. What would happen if sand dissolved? What would happen at a beach? Uh, just things to think about. So we're talking about properties and there's two big groups of properties. There's the physical and chemical properties. Um, we're going to focus today on just looking at physical properties. Chemical properties we'll look at all the way through chemistry. Um, physical properties are things that we can easily see, um, so colour, density, hardness, conductivity. And we usually call them macroscopic, which means big, um, big and easily visible. Then we have the chemical properties, which are microscopic. Um, so does it melt? Does it burn? Uh, what does it react with? Um, they're not easily visible. You have to do experiments to see what they do. So they're microscopic properties. Today we're going to focus on the macroscopic properties. Right, so we're going to start by looking at melting point and boiling point. So melting point is the temperature at which a solid turns into a liquid, and boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid turns into a gas. So I have a little prop here that we're going to use to discuss some of these properties today. Um, this is a little mitt that we use um, in science to grab hot things. It's made out of a rubbery plastic material. So what kind of properties would this need to have to be effective at its job? So I'm going to ask you that question now. So in terms of melting and boiling point, we wouldn't want this to boil on contact with hot glassware because it wouldn't be particularly useful if it did that. Um, it would just evaporate away. It also has to have a fairly high melting point because, again, if we touch this to a hot object in science and it melts, it's not going to help us. It's not going to protect our hand. It's not going to be useful at its job as carrying, at carrying things. So here's some other macroscopic properties. We've got hardness. Um, a hard object is resistant to denting and scratching. Uh, durability is um, it's just how long something lasts. So if something is durable, it lasts for a long time. Um, heat resistance is a measure of how well something resists heat. So here we have you know, how to test hardness. Essentially, you drop heavy objects or things and see if they dent or, and break. And durability is related in often, uh, often times to hardness. So if you have a phone, you want it to be resistant to dents and scratches, otherwise it's not going to be particularly useful in your pocket. Um, and you also want it to last a long time, or at least the length that, uh, until the next upgrade comes. So you need to think of those kinds of properties um, when we're dealing with materials. Um, so talk about heat resistance, here are some tiles on the bottom of a space shuttle, one of the space shuttles I saw when I was in the US. Um, these need to be very highly resistant to heat, because as um, the shuttle enters through the atmosphere, here's a bit of an artist's rendering, um, you get uh, ionization and heating up of the gases underneath the shuttle as it's coming through due to friction. Um, they need These tiles under here need to be able to resist the heat, otherwise uh, the whole thing would just burn up and that wouldn't be good. And that happened um, on one occasion when a hole was produced in a wing due to a collision on takeoff with some foam. Um, so hot gases got into the shuttle and that was the end of it. That was a very sad story. 
Um, some other properties, so thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity. So thermal conductivity, how well does the material allow heat to transfer through it? And electrical conductivity, um, how well does can an electric current flow through um, a substance? So again, if we go back to my little mitt, um, you'd want this to have very low thermal conductivity because if I touch this onto a hot object, I don't want the heat energy transferring through it to my fingers, or otherwise, again, it's not particularly useful at its job. I'll just burn myself, which is the whole point of this, is to avoid me from burning myself when I'm carrying things. Um, in terms of electrical conductivity, metals are really good at conducting electricity, as is the material called graphite, which is made up of carbon. So they're very handy for allowing electricity to flow through, but there are some situations where you don't want things to flow through. So here I have a small electrical cord. Um, inside there is a wire that's made out of metal that's really conductive, but the outside is made of plastic, which isn't. Um, if the outside was conductive as well, the cord wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be very good at its job and you'd probably get a bit of a zap if you use the headphones. So another property is strength, so it's the ability to withstand stress um, without failing, malleability, um, the ability to be dented or shaped um, using pressure or hammering, and ductility, the ability to be drawn into a wire. Um, so here's a strength testing machine, it's testing the strength of a can in there. Um, you'd want the can to be able to resist a certain amount of strength. It's carrying a pressurised gas inside it. So if it bursts, that pressurized gas come out, and that could be quite dangerous. So you want materials that have to withstand strength to be quite strong. And there's several different types of strength, and we might talk about those later on. Malleability is handy for metals. You want to hammer a metal into a particular shape. You want the metal that you're hammering to be um, easily malleable into a particular shape. If it doesn't um, meld into a shape and instead it breaks, then it's not going to be useful for that uh, bending into a particular shape. Um, ductility is the ability of a metal to be drawn into a wire, so essentially you're pulling the metal at both ends and pulling it into a thin uh, wire. Um, gold is the most ductile of uh, metals. Um, one gram of gold could be drawn into a wire 2.4 kilometers long. So those different properties are useful in different situations. We talked a little bit about solubility before, so it's the degree to which a substance dissolves in water, and we can measure how many grams of a substance dissolve in a certain volume of water and use that as our solubility measure. Uh, flexibility, um, the ease at which a substance can bend, and brittleness. So brittleness is kind of related to hardness in a way. Um, a lot of hard, metal, uh, hard materials are brittle, so if you hit them in the wrong spot, they will break very easily. Um, if we talk about solubility, you wouldn't want to make a ship out of salt because it will just dissolve as soon as it goes into the water, so it wouldn't be particularly useful. Um, flexibility, again we'll go back to my little uh, little mitt, um, it's flexible so I can grab containers of different size. So it's very handy that it's flexible. If it wasn't flexible then it wouldn't be very useful at its job. Um, brittleness, um, you want materials usually to be hard not brittle but sometimes brittleness can be um, handy. So down here we have a picture of the Titanic um, and one of the reasons why it sank is because the rivets that were used to hold the steel plates that made up the hull together were more brittle than they should have been. So they were made of steel. The steel had a lot of these, you can see this round bit in here, a lot of uh, round bits of carbon inside the steel. Too much carbon in steel can be make the steel very brittle. So there's a certain level of carbon in the steel that makes it very strong and doesn't break easily. The rivets that were used to hold the um, plates together were quite brittle. So when the force was applied on the Titanic by the iceberg, um, a lot of the rivets broke, um, they were very brittle and they just snapped and that allowed water in and that's one of the reasons why it sank. So some scientists looked at the carbon content of the steel said it was way too high. If they'd used a higher quality of steel in the rivets with less carbon then the Titanic might not have um, sank, which is quite interesting. So today on Flipping Science we looked at some of the macroscopic physical properties of materials and we talked about how those properties relate to the usefulness of uh, those materials in particular uses. That's it for Flipping Science today, see ya!